three, two, one. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's Glenn Snyder here with the Weapons of Mass Discussion Podcast, Ministry of Defense, LLC. On the phone once again during the corona outbreak, Dr. Corbett Everidge. Man, you ready to get back to normal yet? Your new oh, normal? Man, I, oh, no, I'm actually, you know, <laughs> kind of enjoy, starting to enjoy myself at Gulag 17. So, <laughs> yeah, they're treating um, me good here. I got my own pet uh, polar bear. The Gulag. Vodka. Yeah. Some chick named Elsa. It was great, man. Oh, about seven I feet tall. I think it's a chick anyway. But, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. But, uh, man, I, I tell you what, I'm just, uh, the big thing right now is ready to get ready to get busy ready to get things back uh, on track now uh, hopefully things will start uh people you know they'll start lightening up on stuff and letting people kind of live their lives again like yeah, like, not like human ass on a watch list from the governor but uh, uh that'd be okay yeah i uh, uh i'm not real happy with our governor at this point um i don't you know, ever hear another word about me no you know? well you know hey hey so I, 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 you know, I got involved, and I, I wrote a, I wrote a letter to the governor's office last week. Now I'm sure he'll never read it. You know, I got a, you know, generically generated response back immediately. So it's I'm sure it'll, it'll copy of a rubber stamp. Yeah, yeah, it'll, oh, it didn't even get that, man. It didn't get, it didn't get that. It looks like somebody typed it on a on a cell phone. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it wasn't very formal. But See, the uh, thing I'm, I'm over, you know, is everybody, you know, you know. Playing, you know, I'm 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 stuck inside. Yeah. Well, go outside. Yeah. Well, you know, ninety <laughs> days on an electronic house arrest. You know, he's not. Uh, nah, nah, this, nah. This, ain't no, <laughs> this, this ain't nothing. Now, if somebody, I'm just curious because I don't know. Is anybody getting on house arrest? Can you go outside, or you got actually stuck into the boundaries of the house? Oh yeah. Well, you know, you, gotta, you can't go out of a certain range. Uh, well, since my little foray into that uh area a few years ago, many many years ago actually. Uh, yeah, you could go outside and they turn it off for you to go to work. But yeah, you know, it was pretty much, you know, when, when the, when the light started blinking, yeah, it's better be in the house. <laughs> God, you know, but, body, uh, man. Oh, we just need to do a podcast on, on your adventures in one day. Just, <laughs> Oh, we will. No, we gotta, I, I, I gotta, <laughs> gotta build up to it. it. Yeah. We gotta, I got a little bit, I got a, a little bit of an appointment. I gotta get through first. But we'll do. You know, um, <laughs> Yeah, you need to write your memoirs one day, man. Ain't that what they call it, the memoirs? Yeah, the last time I did that, you know what happened. But, uh, God. Anyway, anyway, we'll, we'll get back on task here. Um, so today, um, interesting topic for today. Uh, Cor- Corbett had uh, texted me, you know, earlier in the week and threw a topic out there, and very interesting. Kind of struck my struck my fantasy a little bit. And uh, the question is, what is or is not a hero? Now, what I'll do is I'll turn it over to Corbett and let him kind of explain his thought process on that, and we'll get the ball rolling on this. Oh, yeah, you can throw me down the pipe. Damn right. I'm throwing you okay. out there to the Tigers, man. Yeah, that way when this thing, you know, when we get hate mail, it's all, you know, anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, a hero. You know, you know, Glenn, you know, at the blog and then over the past few weeks, you know, if you've noticed a little theme in my thinking, it's been how uh, our language – especially in the United States, I mean, you can say this across the English-speaking world, but especially here in America, has, and I hate to use this word, but evolved, has changed into something else. Mm-hmm. Metamorphosized may be a better, cha- better choice of words. But what got me thinking about this was two things that happened in the last couple, about the last week. Um, I'm standing in line one day, and... Um, about a week ago, I was at a convenience store, you know, getting in energy drink. And this guy looks at me and says, uh, thank you. And I'm like, for what? For what? <laughs> no, and he, he, he pointed at my shirt and says, no, well, thank you. I'm like, I look down and it didn't, even, it didn't even register with me. It was one of my old Army PT shirts. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm like, well, what the hell is this guy talking about? What have I done? You know, I, I was an intel. I was an intel guy. I was like, you know, buried so far under up underneath the base. You know, I, you know, the, the cockroaches would have died before I did in, in the event of a nuclear strike. Well, in the other branch of military police, maybe he was referring to that. Yeah, yeah, but you know, that <laughs> was, uh, he, he didn't know shit about what you done. <laughs> exactly. You could have been the guy know, peeling the potatoes in the kitchen. Exactly. You know. You know. I mean, we've got to a point where the word hero has been diluted. I'm mm-hmm. not going to say degraded. I'm going to say diluted. Yeah, watered it down. It doesn't mean anything anymore. 
you know, we every person that serves, and I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. Yes, some of y'all are going to get heat at me, and I don't care. Let's go back through the other part of this that got me to think about this. About a, a few days ago, I might have been a week. I've lost track of it. I just, I, I can't watch the news anymore. You know, you can't watch anything without hearing about COVID, Corona, you know, Joe Jaboba, mm. whatever, whatever yep. they're calling it this week. Yep. I'm done. I'm out. Yep. You know, I'm, I'm y'all on. let me. COVID load, just like you brought it the other week. Y'all, y'all let me know when to turn the light back on. I'm, I'm good. Uh, but there was some doctor up in um, New York, up in that area, that finally decided she couldn't take the, the carnage anymore, and she checked out, met a suicide. Hmm. And the headline was, COVID-19 hero commit suicide. Well, it got me to thinking, which is dangerous. Hmm. And Slightly. I, yeah, exactly. I'm a student of the language. You know, during my my legal training and my and my PhD training, part of what I looked at was was linguistics. What do these words mean? You know, and the and, and the the context in which I was looking at it was like police interrogations. What did Party A being the police say? What did Party B being the the suspect or now the person of interest? We can't call them a suspect anymore. It's a person of interest. See how that changes? <laughs> oh, my God. The, 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 the language it all still means the same thing, but uh, they change it so it doesn't sound as ominous, maybe? Right, right. You know, so, you know, he's, he's a person of interest. You know, I mean, so anyway, that, that's for another discussion. But what does this mean in context what does it, <clears throat> and this little interplay of, of, of dialogue? Well, if you go back over through time and, and, and what our words mean, I think it's going to put what I'm about to say in context. And, and really what put me on the path of this was something one of my former students said. So if C, and, 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 and it, it, is a, it is a C, it's not a him, her, Z, Zhao, Zhu, or, or an attack helicopter. <laughs> it's a bona fide woman with, with where well, you fill in the parts. Yep. Okay. And it was like she was reading my mind. So either I trained her very well or she's more diabolical than I ever gave her credit for. A hero, according to the, to the modern definition, mm -hmm. is somebody that is held in high esteem for noble acts, noble deeds, or, or high character. Yeah. Uh, another definition I came across is somebody who is held in, in, in high regard at a personal level, meaning, you know, your dad is your hero. And I don't think there's any boy alive that, you know, that, yeah. you know, probably hadn't either been abused or molested that would say that about his dad. Right. Uh, but what's interesting is when you go back into the, into the history of English, you start seeing the word hero, there was a much higher standard to be met. It was denoted by a person who does something courageous under extraordinary circumstances. Right. Now we look at that other word, extraordinary. We're not talking about ordinary. We're talking about extraordinary. There's two words made together. Meaning this just doesn't happen every day. Like being under fire and going out and grabbing a couple of guys off the battlefield because they've been wounded and everybody's shooting at you. That's extraordinary right. circumstances. Right. You know, you know, you, you talk about, you know, we're, we, you know, whether or not you chose to be there is irrelevant in a military context. It's, yeah. you know, did you do something noble, courageous you know that took a, a, a bucket full of balls to do that nobody else would have done right and now we we've, we've placed you on this perch well now what it seems to be is everybody's a hero you know you went and joined the military like i did in two branches you're a hero you become a police officer you're a hero mm-hmm you become, in, in the day and age now, you become a heart surgeon. You're a hero. Mm -hmm. You become a nurse, and you have to work in an area like New York City where there's they're doing the backstroke in the coronavirus. Right. Well, okay, what, what am I going to say? You're, You're a, a hero. hero. Right. Right. 
but what you do not hear when you're looking at this pandemic, and let's just give it what it is. It is a pandemic. It's worldwide. Here's what really kind of put a bee in my bonnet about it. And it's something about got me that about got me thrown out of the Navy one time. Go figure. Oh, exactly. You know, there was a <laughs> the backstory on this is they put me in a, and, and if you can believe this, there was a guy that I worked with in the Navy that was actually had less tact than I do. Hmm, really? I mean, He's a one interesting individual. Yeah. I mean, he would make a funeral director sound like a motivational speaker. <laughs> well, we had new sailors coming in, you know, into the reserve unit. Some of them were coming from other branches like Army, Army uh, that had never done sea time. And then we had some fairly young sailors coming in that might have done, you know, their time in the fleet and came into the reserves. Well, one of the first videos we showed them was of the USS Indianapolis. Hmm. Where, long story short, half the crew got ate, eaten by sharks. Yep. And the, the, the point we were making is when it comes to doing your job, when it comes to doing what you enlisted to do, there may be some things you have to do that are from a from from normal everyday life, this takes me. Meaning, would you have the courage and the the mental toughness to seal a hatch that have, uh, of a of a compartment of a ship that had been hit by a torpedo, knowing that the minute you seal that hash that hatch, you're going to drown thirty people intentionally, but it saves the rest of the ship. Can you do that? That's all cool. Well, that, that's that's reality. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I get it. Absolutely. That's reality. Now, here's the question. Is somebody like me who would look at, at, at a, a person who was maybe two ranks below me, and, and this happens, and I say, seal that hatch. Am I a hero? Now, I saved a, a, one, a one or two or three billion dollar ship, and I saved a thousand other lives. But I just intentionally killed 30 precious souls to save those others. Am I a hero? I mean, I, you did what you were supposed to. You did what you were, you were trained to do. So, I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I have to say, yeah, you was a hero because you, you did what you were supposed to do. Now it's it's I mean I I don't it'd be tough to live with that after the fact no you know you got to live with that on your mind that that you had to pull that pull that card but I mean again if you got a thousand other people I mean that's a tough one brother right that's a tough the call but, but 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 that would put you in that but that's somebody that's in an extraordinary situation under extraordinary circumstances with a, a, a choice to be made that's that. Not every person is going to ever have the op you know the option of making. Okay, fair enough. Now that's and and that and and, and Glenn going back to this. This is a very subjective topic. You know, you're going to see that from one from one angle. I see it some way else. I would make the argument on that. I'm not a hero because. I did what I was trained to do. You go through other instances in, in, in military history where, and, and here's the classic one, and this has been done several times, where you have an infantry soldier who will knowingly dive and lay on top of a hand grenade to save the lives of, of his fellow soldiers or, or Marines. And I would say that's a hero. In, in, in any sense of the definition, yes. Mm -hmm. Where he gave, or she, now let's let's be fair about this, gave their life willingly mm -hmm. to save the lives of others. I think that is the prototypical definition where you can look at it and say that this person done something extraordinary mm -hmm. in, in a grave circumstance that has 
define their character as noble. What's interesting about this, though, in our society is we have pigeonholed ourselves into believing or, or limiting, probably not believing, but we pigeonhole ourselves into, into categorizing heroes as people who only do certain things. You know, the military, of course. Yeah. Is every person that joins the military a hero? That, that is a subjective point of view, coming right. from where I did. Right. No, they're not. They, they, are, they are no more of a citizen than you are, than your wife, than, than your father-in-law. Right. They made, they made a choice to do something in their life for whatever the motivation. They chose to serve. But does that, that simple act of something that millions of people that have gone before us has made, mm -hmm. does, that, does that simple act make them a hero? Just by signing See, up and putting on a uniform, uh, saying, I mean, I mean people, people are going to be pissed. I mean, I don't, I don't see just because you put on a uniform don't make you a hero. You haven't done anything extraordinary at that point. Right. So, because there's some guys, again, you put on a uniform, and I've known many guys that are in the military that, that you know, they never left the base. They never left the, 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 US, the United States of America. Never saw any battle time. Never saw any. They were never put in an, in an extraordinary circumstance. Now, granted, I, I guess the other side of that coin is okay. Yeah, well, they signed up to do it if they were needed, if they were called to do it. So, uh, in that in that stance, you can say, yeah, they are a hero because they put themselves in that position to have to go do that. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, it's if if that's a tough one, man. It can go you either see how way. Great it's, it gets. Yeah, it's subjective. You're right. It's very subjective. It can go either way. You know, you know, you can blanket statement say, yeah, if they're in uniform, you're a hero. But it's just like a, you know, a, a firefighter. Um, you know, when we st I really started hearing a lot of this was you know, September 11th. Whenever you know you had guys and, and, and people going into that, and, you know, you looking up at this hundred story, hundred ten story building, and on fire, and you know good and well in your mind that this is this is bad, and you still go in, you start climbing them stairs, and trying to get people out of there. Police officers saying. Um, yeah, those guys, those guys are heroes, man. They, they stepped up. They didn't have to go into that building. They could have stood out there and be like, uh, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. I'm going to direct the traffic. I'm going to direct people out here on the street. You know what I'm saying? Well, exactly. And it is, it's, it's interesting you brought, bring up firefighters because, you know, with what my wife does, I'm not going to disclose what she does or where she does it because that is, you know, I don't know who's out there. Sorry, but I don't know a lot of you. Right. Uh, but we were talking about this and, you're looking presently about how a lot of these police officers are, are, are getting COVID-19. You know, you got to place yourself in that context where, you know, like even when I did MP work, you know, you you, you go to a domestic violence situation and, and, and there's something actively going on. Well, well, this officer does not have the, the luxury of saying, well, uh, maybe I need to back away from this. Uh, maybe they got they got the coof. Yeah. But, yeah. and and right in front of you, there's a 250-pound man just jackhammering his wife in the face. Now, you got to do something about this. Yeah. So, I get that. But what you're seeing now from, what, from the officers I'm saying is a lot of that stuff, you know, is what we what we feared was going to happen and, and this is and i don't have any macro level meaning and for those of you who who live in in, in north carolina that mean my uh data what i'm hearing from from the guys that i still know within law enforcement is you're starting to see rises and things like domestic violence but as far as property crime yeah there's not that much you know, it, it's actually on 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 a decline as far as what they're seeing, as far as reports and an actual calls for service. I made the point that if 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 the coronavirus spikes, you know, skyrockets, you know, whatever the you know you know term Fauci chooses to use this week, the one public service we cannot lose is the fire department. Right. That cannot happen. You know. 
those guys need a dump truck to carry their testicles around with. You know. Yeah, we have we have about, we have some good friends of ours that are firefighters. Absolutely, professional firefighters. You, know, you talk about you know walking into a house where you don't know what's in it, mm-hmm. whether there's a meth lab in there. You know, God knows what's in this place, and you knowingly walk into a burning structure. And you can make the argument, well, that's what they signed up to do. Of course they did. My smell test on that is if you take 10 men, mm-hmm. how many out of that 10 will do it? Right. You know, and then you're going to have the argument. I, I can already hear the hate mail coming in now about the military. Because in the United States presently, we have, it's less than 1% of the entire population. That, that actually, for I'm talking active duty National Guard Reserve, enlist to become part of the United States military. Right. What's further interesting about that is if you break that down regionally around the United States, 41% of the military comes from the southern states. You know, now 41%, you're going, well, that's not a majority. But when you break it down regionally, yes, yeah, that's, that's a large group who, from one area. Who's carrying the load for this? Yeah. So that that's where you start to look. Okay, are we loosening the definition on what this means? Well, let's get back to our doctor friend here who decided, you know, you know, you know, they, it was time to leave the party. Early. What got me onto that subject was a, a something one of my former martial arts students said, and it was. And if she's listening, I, I'm, I'm this, this is high level thinking. So, you know who you are. I'm proud of you. We're looking at a person who is highly educated, mm-hmm. very intelligent, done something noble. Let's give them that. Mm-hmm. But it's like you and I have been talking about. The math of this don't add up. Right. I have a person that I know that works in the, in a hospital, and I, and I was asking her, as a matter of fact, it was yesterday morning. Why are they emptying out the hospitals if these numbers don't support the number of COVID patients actually being hospitalized? And, and what she said, it, it, a light bulb went off. He said, because they don't want to risk infecting other people if there's COVID patients in there and they can't control the outbreak. So if this had been two months earlier, meaning December 9th, I would never have had to have, I would never have been allowed to have my hernia surgery because it didn't have anything to do with the COVID patient. It was me they were worried about. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why they're emptying out these hospitals, according to this person that I know that works in a hospital. And I've heard the same thing. Different source, same outcome. Right. Okay, right. So we're on the same page. Yep. Okay. So if if what we're being told is true, and if the if the if the statistics that we're being told and, and told about and reading about every day does not does not support the seriousness of this. And I'm not this, you know, there are people dying from this. There's something out there. Yes, there is. And, you know, all of the comparisons, I, you know, I'm a PhD nerd. I'm not going down that path, but there's something out there. It's just not to the level that we've been sold. And this person commits suicide. Mm -hmm. Can't take it anymore. I got to go. No, uh, no, you're not a hero. You're a quitter. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I can hear it now. Well, how can you make a judgment like that? You're a Christian. I know it's very, you know, we're told in Scripture, you know, I have finished the race. Yeah. You don't get to decide when the race is over. That That's not your decision to make. You know, you chose... A way out. I'm not going to say it's an easy way out. I'm not going to say it's it's a it, it's a it's a way out that you know that does not take some level of courage because it does. I ain't got the I ain't got the balls to stick a gun in my mouth. Nope. 
but you forsook, forsake, forsook, forsook, and whatever the word is, what what time you had to do something good on the rest for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Because and was in a position to do that good, right? You know, but here's what really is interesting about this one: when you talk about heroes, and going back to my martial arts. Today, You've got people in our society that were labeled as heroes. You've got police. Mm-hmm. You know, God forbid you, you say something bad about the cops on social media, and you'll be on the you'll be on the wall at the post office. Uh, the military. Now it's doctors and nurses. Those are heroes. I'm sorry, but you either knew or reasonably should have known what you were getting yourself into. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got into this debate with with several of my friends that are police, and they don't like it, and I've repeatedly said something on this this podcast before, and I said it to them. I don't care. It comes a part of the job that at one point you're going to get into a fight. It comes a part of the job that yeah. you're going to get into a scuffling match with somebody that's bleeding like a stuck pig, and you find out later, mm, this ain't good, they're HIV positive. It comes a part of the job that you're going to pull somebody out of a car that has a brake pedal rammed up their ass. Yeah, that, That's a true story, by the way. It's going to become a part of the job that somebody may point a gun at you and kill you. So, yeah. yes, sir or ma'am, you did sign up for that. That's part of the, that comes with the territory. You know, don't come at me with this weak bull crap about why well, I didn't know this. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Same thing with the military. That we had, that in my former position where we were in, in of course, what Cordon Water Commander says, we were not, we were, we were far too abrasive, I believe was the words, about how we were training our, our new members of the reserve. Now what we're looking at, though, is we have people that simply are not living in, a, in an objective reality. Do you mean to tell me that you thought you was going to join the United States Army, United States Marine Corps, United States Navy, whatever whatever it is? Yeah. And you didn't think there was a possibility that you're going to get sent somewhere and see somebody get shot to the point that their entrails were laying out on their lap? I... I yeah, you'd be pretty naive to think that think, think to, anything okay. else. Now, now that I made that point, let's flip the script on this. Okay. Essential businesses. Oh boy, here we go. Okay. So these people are heroes, but you've got eighteen and nineteen year old kids, or people who, for whatever reason, did not either choose to or had the opportunities that you and I had to go to school to better themselves. Mm -hmm. That being a cashier at a grocery store is their lot in life. And you know what? God bless you. I'm glad you're there because you we know you're there to help me feed my family. Yeah. Those people are not trained for that. No. Those people did not sign up for that. You know, you go to a you know to, to go get your oil changed and you've got COVID-19 and you're sitting there coughing and hacking because you haven't gotten around to go to the doctor yet. Well, that auto mechanic working in there trying to feed his family, he didn't sign up for that. Nope. That wasn't in the job description. No. But we look down on these people. No, oh, you're making a great point, brother. Great yeah, point. we look down on these people because, you know, because, well, they don't they don't put their life on the line every day. You don't know what it's like to walk out the door and not see your, not have the possibility of not seeing your wife. Well, that's an interesting point, so hold the phone. I dug into this a little bit. You know what the most dangerous job, depending, there's there's about three different surveys in the United States going on right now. You can go on uh, Business Insider, Forbes, I think a couple of those those websites. Mm -hmm. What's one of the most dangerous jobs in the United States? Dude, I have no clue. <laughs> I wouldn't even get to start. Depending uh, on which re- which study you read, 
It's either logging okay. or commercial fishing. Yeah. Okay, the deadliest catch, one of them type things. Yeah, okay. Okay. Law enforcement came in anywhere from 10th to 15th. Now, they're looking at fatalities, uh, injuries on the job, you know, with so many within a, within a population of, of participants, participants within the profession. It didn't even crack the top 10. Well, uh, going at tuna boat did, did Oh, yeah. Convenience store clerks, taxi cab drivers. And you're going to look at me with a straight face and tell me, I didn't sign up for this. Well, neither did that taxi cab driver, driver that got his brains blown out from behind because somebody wanted to steal his money. Right. Is he a hero? Wow, man. You, you're going deep on this one. I mean, is he? You know. He hasn't done anything heroic. No, he was just simply trying to drive you from point A but to he, point B. He was just doing his job. Right. Now. now I guess you could you could, you could could go deep and say, well, okay, well, he was doing this job and defeat his family. And I, I guess if, you, if you're a hard worker and you do what's right and you, you keep your head straight, I guess you could be considered a hero. Like if he had a, he had a kid, he probably his kid's hero. So it, it depends on which light you're looking at it. You know, and, and it's interesting <clears throat> because, you know, you want to talk about getting gut punched, you know, we're, we're, we're homeschooling our son now. I mean, schools are shut down. So me and my wife decided we're going to take the bull by the horns and we're going to, we're going to make him into what we want him to be. Mm -hmm. I don't need these people. You know, school teachers, you know, heroes, right? You know, hashtag red for red. Here we go. Okay. So <laughs> we're going to do this our way. <laughs> yeah, we're going, we're going to do this my way. Gotcha. Well, we're, we're coming back today. We, we went out and PE, we went Mike, uh, mountain bike ride. He said, can you roll up the windows? I want to ask you a couple questions. I said, absolutely. So he was asking me if, something about mountain bikes because we just got done riding. He said, well, I got another question. He says, what was your dad like? Wow. Wow. Because my son's adopted and, and we, you know, my dad, actually, if you go back on the timeline, my dad passed away about a month before my son was born. And I made that point to him. You know, that according to me, my dad was my hero. Right. Heroes can be subjective. I'm talking, we're looking at a at a, a, at a societal level. Here's what we're talking about. We're looking at a cultural level right. of, of the point we're making. You know, my dad had a seventh grade education. You know, he... he you had, where he was from, you had a choice. You either worked in the coal mine or you joined the military to get out. And he, he would tell you, he, he said it jokingly, he said, I had a choice between the Marines and the coal mine, and this was in 1955. Yeah. That's when the Marines of Paris Island would beat the hell out of you in basic training yeah. for boot camp. He said, I took the easy way out. I joined the Marines. <laughs> Better than damn coal mines, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. You know, he eventually did get his, his GED, and he was embarrassed about that. He did not like to talk about that. That was, he, he did not like the fact that he was not educated like that. He was a mechanical genius. But, hands down, with three fingers on my hand, he's one of the three wisest people I've ever known. We've lost that. Yeah. Because we don't have the, the insight to look at people for what they are now. There's nothing wrong with being an ordinary joke. There's nothing wrong with going to work every day and doing your job, making this country move, making it, making it great, right? That's right. But we've got to a point in our society where everybody has to be great. Yes, you're great in somebody's eyes. You're great in your wife's eyes. You're great in your children's eyes. You're great in your parents' eyes. What more could you ask for? Right. But why, why do you have to be a hero in somebody's eyes who within 30, 30 minutes, I, I was about to say 30 days, I'm, let's just be realistic about it, 30 minutes, will never remember your name. Right. 
But you're sitting here <laughs> asking people now, and and Glenn, you know, I know how you feel about this. You know, I'm, I've made my my points on it. Let's just assume that this thing is contagious and it's bad. But you're going to make some some because it's a an essential business. People have to eat, right? Mm-hmm. I kind of like it. You know, and you can make the well. They don't have to go to work there. Well, they do if they want to feed the family. But you're going to make some woman that, for whatever reason, cannot get a better job. You know, because you know, 25 million people over the past few weeks have lost their jobs. Right. So she has to go to work there. And the whole time there's somebody in front of her coughing and hacking and sneezing and, and, and taking their filthy hands and wiping it all over the pen pads. Yeah. For eight dollars an hour. Is she a hero? Yeah. She's doing what I, she has to do to survive. To so support. You see how blurred this gets. Oh no, yeah, I, I got you, man. I got you. I got I, I got it. You know, I mean, it's I, interesting I, because with with my martial arts, you know, my instructor went far, far beyond physical technique. You know this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And a lot of the things he taught me about, you know, you go back in the samurai history and, and, and that culture, they downplayed that. You know, it, it, it wasn't, you, you didn't seek to become a hero. You didn't seek the limelight. You know, my instructor, I, I'm not going to divulge what he did in the British military, but they were some pretty bad dudes. We talked about it. Yep. You don't see them guys on Fox News. You don't see them writing memoirs. No. You don't know who they are. Does that make them any less of a hero because people don't know who they are? Absolutely not. No, we we need to re-examine ourselves in this country. And is is COVID nineteen, Corona, Goja Boba, whatever this is going to be this week? Yeah. Is this the big one that's going to bring us to our knees? I don't think so. No. I've said that. I think this is a wake up call. Mm-hmm. Am I degrading people who do these jobs? No, I'm not. I, I mean, you know, back in December, I was grateful for that guy who who. who Picked both my hernias and took that uh, lymph node out of my leg. Yep. Appreciate you. But let's flip the script on that. Let's say that he fixed me and the nine previous patients, none beknownst to me, died. Is he a hero? Not, not for them. <laughs> <laughs> right. the, now, yeah. let me throw this at you. Okay. You got a soldier who. Let's go back to what we were talking about. You know, it was in a, in a heat of battle. Charges a machine gun nest. Gets Swiss cheese. And he's able to throw three grenades into a machine gun nest and kill all the all the enemy soldiers in a machine gun nest. And it saves ten of his own soldiers' lives. Mm-hmm. Is he a hero? Yes, he is. What if he's a Nazi soldier in World War II? He's a hero to the other side. Right. Not to me. Subjective. <laughs> So then he's it not a hero. Depends on what side, of the, I guess, on what side of the fence you're on. Right. Well, I, I, that's a pretty deep point there, man, because, I mean, you, yeah, that that's a really deep point. You know, I think my, my, my point on this is it's almost a, the term hero has become so manufactured that it doesn't mean anything anymore. I served in the military. I served in two branches of the military. People, and, 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 and I don't know if you've seen this. I, 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 mean, I can't recall if you've ever seen this happen to me or not. But it makes me very uncomfortable for people to, to recognize me as a veteran and say, well, 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 thank you for your service. That makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I've seen people say something to you before about that. And you're just, you, you, you really just don't really pay much attention. You kind of go away from it. You know... I, I didn't do that all that for that. Right. You know, and, 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 and I served in during the times that, you know, we, we were, well, we are still at war, but, you know, I'm talking back in the times from 01 to about 08, 09 ish when everything was heating up. Yeah. Yeah. I got the phone call. You know, the average pack of shit you're getting on the boat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I got those calls. Yeah. 
you know, me and my wife had not been together. That I, we had probably hadn't only been together about two months when back then you had an answering machine. Walked in, pushed the button. I looked at her. It's like, well, uh, I need some toiletries. Let's go to Walmart. And I'll see you in about six months. Yeah. I've been through it. I don't consider myself a hero. I, I did my job. I did what they asked of me. Um, but what you're seeing now is, are, is the receptionist at the hospital checks in because she's got to put up with a she a hero. Or he, right. Or he. Hey, man, I'm in. I work in an essential business. I I gotta go to work tomorrow. I've been going to going in about every day. I'm not a hero. I'm going in doing. I'm making stuff for the medical community, but I'm not a hero. Yep. The point I'm making on this, Glenn, and I, I mean, what I want people to do. Number one is think, and, and you've heard me say this in our courses. Hundreds, if not thousands of times. Now, when it comes time for something to happen, you're not going to have time to stop and, 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 and philosophize and think about this. Right. That's what this time is for. But we have the opportunity as every everyday citizens and as people who are, are, are at, at the at the 35,000 foot view. Are we putting people on a pedestal and putting them and, and holding them to expectations that they cannot meet? And or are we also doing something? Are we that egotistical as a society to where the traditional definition of a hero that, that almost rose to a demigod? Well, we're something special if that's the case. Hmm. I mean, my God, I mean, you know, I'm, 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 you know, the ancient Greeks are rolling over in their graves right now. I, I think if if anything comes out of this, as far as a, a, a time of self, self-reflection, we need to look at ourselves and be humbled. All of us. Yeah. You know, it, it's... It's hard to look at somebody, you know, I was I was at a, a course a couple of years ago and it was being taught by a, a uh, gentleman that was not American, and I'll leave it at that. And he was making the point, he said, you know, where, where we are, he said, we only come to the American military or, or veterans if we need two types of training, firearms and medical. I said, why is that? He said, because y'all are so good at picking fights for people, you're the best in the world at it. Well, That's how people look at us. But these same people that he's looking at, and he wasn't being negative. He, it, that, that, that was not his intent. He was right. being simply objective. Right. But he made a very valid point. These are the people we hold up as heroes. You know, there was a, a post on Facebook, and, and I've detoxed as much as I possibly can on Facebook without deleting my account, and that might be next. Yeah. Or like me, just never have one. Right. Well, you know, there's something to be said for that. But if you'll recall, there's a couple of weeks ago, it was within the last couple of weeks, it was up in Idaho. Uh, and I don't know the, the, the full details of the story, so if I'm butchering this, forgive me. But there was a woman that went to a park or something with the kids. Mm -hmm. They were, according to her, she was following all the social distancing guidelines. Eh, fair enough. I'll meet you halfway. Okay. Well, apparently two or three police officers showed up. And the one that was on camera, you could tell he was kind of uncomfortable with all this. You know, that's code word for him. He thought it was just a bigger bunch of BS. She did. Mm -hmm. She got arrested. And the interesting part about all this is she was married to a police officer. Wow. Well, a few days later, you've heard me say this before, your enemies have names and addresses. Uh, make of that what you will, folks. 
Well, somebody up there had the same idea that I did, and they found this officer's house, and they in, in a mob mentality suit, and they went to his house and surrounded the joint to to show him, you know, we're we're not too afraid of you, and we're not really pleased with how you how you handle this. Right. I'm not advocating it. He's reporting a story. But we see how quickly a hero can fall from grace. Yeah. One, and one wrong decision. Right. We we see how quickly a a what you believe to be a a, a lawful and a and let's just use the word a righteous move. Now he's he's supporting the law. Right. 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 Backfired on him. You you can choose to lay blame on whichever side you want to. I don't care. Yeah. That could have gone badly for any number of people. <clears throat> is he a hero? Who knows what this man has done before, the one that, that, that his house got mobbed. Yeah. Maybe a great guy. He got saved a baby from a burning fire or something. Yeah, we could I mean, who knows? No no. Maybe he was having a bad day. I mean and that's one thing I caution people about cops. They're just like me and you. Yeah. You know, they got up and the coffee pot was broke. The dog took a dump in the floor. He stepped in on the way to the shower. And newborn baby been up all night screaming and crying. And he's got to go to work. Yeah. So like human anybody. beings. Yeah. You know, they got they got hopes, dreams, desires, problems, and issues, and, and, and fears just like you and I do. Yep. But just for the simple fact they put on a polyester suit and with a, with a badge and... and and all that other crap, does that transform into something that the, at the English language over time has said they may or may not be? Uh, 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 I'm not going to. If you do something, I'll give it to you. I'll say, yes, you're a hero. The fact that you get up and go to work every day just like everybody else does. Sorry, brother, you Joe Schmo is like I am. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've probably alienated about 89% of our uh, customer base now. <laughs> well, here's, but no, uh, and the reason I say, I mean, because when you, you're painting both sides of it. Yeah, again, it, like you said earlier, it is totally subjective. Not everybody has done a, has done a heroic deed. You know, it, you know, it, it takes more than dressing the part, you know, just because I put on an Iron Man helmet don't mean I'm Iron Man. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, you know, so it, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, to be to, to, to be traditionally what we think of as a hero requires a heroic deed. It requires, you know, you've done something, just like you said, an extraordinary circumstance. Um, something that not everybody that would be posed with that situation would be able to take it on. And you're absolutely right, man. I mean, you, you, I mean, that's, 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 a, that's a deep conversation. I didn't know this is where you were going tonight. And again, everybody out there, I mean, he, he gives me the topic. I just know the topic. I don't know what angle he's coming from. Some things I do because I know him so well, but, you know, he, he, he tries his best to throw me a curveball whenever he can. And uh, that's a, that, that was good, man. That, that, this is a slider. But, you know, <laughs> you know Glenn, nah, I'm not a baseball I, guy. I'm not. I don't want people to, to think that I'm, 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 being a jerk, which I don't have to try for that. <laughs> or I'm, I'm trying to be hard to get along with or, 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 you know, what I'm wanting people to do is think about this. Yeah. Uh, because we have friends. I mean, again, if we have really close, you know, lifelong friends that are law enforcement officers. You know, lifelong friends, guys we've known since we were in school who are professional firefighters. Uh, you know, I, friends that are doctors. Uh, you know, I have family that are nurses, you know, I, I get it, man. I'm not, we're not, it, the, the, the tone of the conversation is definitely not to degrade anybody or take anything away from anybody, but to understand that, you know, like Corbett said, you know, don't water down the term. Don't, don't degrade its meaning. So when somebody does really does something heroic, that it's no better than somebody that's not done anything heroic. 
but yet they're all heroes. You, 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 does that make sense? Absolutely. You I mean, know, don't take it away from somebody that's actually done something to deserve the title. Well, that earned it. Right. That's right. You know, you, you look at that, and and I, I I don't know if you picked up on this last week when I wrote the blog, but I put. I kind of threw a, a, a phrase in there that that uh, we haven't gotten hate mail on it yet, but, I, you know, if you do, you know, whatever. The false god of equality. Hmm. You know, well, people, and, and this is words again, folks, so, so, you know, bear with me a second. What people are saying is equality now is not equality. It's called egalitarianism. Egalitarian. Where, you know, yes, men and women have the right to vote you know, on on a quote-unquote equal footing. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is. You know, you can be white, black, Chinese, Hispanic, whatever, where everybody has the same opportunity and access, right? Right, right. But when it comes to true equality, meaning everybody's the same across the board. No, we're not. I'm sorry, folks, but you're not. We're not. <laughs> Even you know, identical twins are different. <laughs> so come you know, on, man. I mean, in our context, Glenn, let's just put it this way: if everybody's equal across the board, right? Well, in effect, you and I are out of business because we walk in, you know, okay, uh, welcome to MOD. Well, you know, here's what we are. We're all eight, and tenth grand tenth dance. <laughs> yeah. Seven minutes later, here's your black belt. Uh, you'll be teaching next week. Yeah, yeah, that's horseshit. Yeah, that, that, right. that, that's not reality. But that's equality, because you can't tell them they're not they're they're not something that you and I are. Right. You know, I've been doing this for twenty eight years, twenty eight and a half, yeah, a little over twenty eight years. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll be the you've heard me say this before. I'm my skill level. I'm nowhere near what I need to be. I stink. That's how I see myself and on my subjective. own. What my knowledge is. <laughs> But then you're going to say, well, this person, you know, comes in, they, they have worked hard. They've tried hard. They really, you know, it's the hope, desire, to dream to be a black belt in six months. Took me seven years. Who do you think you are? Yeah. And that, and I have said that to people who just exactly, who do you think you are? Um, put that back onto the hero part of this. You know, you're you're going to, from a medical perspective, you're going to tell me that, you know, that a person that's that's working is having to put all this stuff on that goes in with these, with these COVID patients. Yeah, I don't want to do it, and I'm glad you're there, especially if I'm one of them. Right. But versus that person that goes in and, and, and within matters, uh, when we're talking seconds, is able to save somebody that's been mangled up in a car accident. They're bleeding to death. Yeah. Is it the same thing? Now it may be if it's if it's you know if it's one of your family members again it's subjective. Right. I'm looking at it from thirty five thousand feet. You know the same person. You know you just go to the police uh, the police officers. Same person. You know that that goes in and breaks up a domestic violence fight. Versus, you know a SWAT team that goes in and is taking live fire and saves three children from the human trafficking situation can i throw the hero label on them you, you, absolutely any day of the week and twice on sunday yep, absolutely again a subjective but there's things in in this life that i'm sorry you just don't they you just don't get them given to you folks yeah and, here, here. and the fact that i went to a recruiter in 19 what is it oh god I actually enlisted in the Army on the exact day that we stopped hostilities in the first Gulf War. That's the day I enlisted. My mom freaked out. Yeah. That was the day I enlisted. Does that make me a hero? Because, I mean, here I was, some, you know, some shaggy-haired kid from North Carolina. Well, that didn't bother me a bit. I don't mind going over there. No, it didn't. Because, I mean, even if I had got sent over there, Glenn, you know, 
with what I did in, in military intelligence, you know, up to and including what I did when I transitioned the Navy. The idea of the, the possibility of somebody shooting at me was slim to none. Right. Get hit with a missile, maybe. So the possibility of me even becoming a hero was null and void. Yeah. But now, oh, you know, oh you're so special. Yes, you are. <laughs> you got you to gotta put the voice in there, don't you? Yeah. I, I, it, <laughs> You know, I, 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 dude, that that's 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 a powerful conversation. Um, it really is. I mean, for, for all you guys out there, you need need to think about these things. Again, I really, really, really push you guys to go check out our blog, ministryofdefense.us slash blog, because Court puts he he puts this stuff to words, and when you read it, he he articulates it very well, and it it really provokes thought. It makes you think about well, you know. It really makes you want to look at what's going on around you, and in this case, you know, look how you lay, look how people are labeled, you know. Um, you're actually right. Not everybody's a hero. Not everybody. No, not everybody's got. Not everybody's gonna have the opportunity to be a hero. You may never be put in the position to be considered a real hero. And that's okay. And that's okay. You live your life you know, to be a hero. Now, again, you're still a valuable human being. Absolutely. Now, to like you know, to your children. You'll probably always be a hero because you provide for them, you do for them. That, that you know, you do what you 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 make them feel special and great. But that doesn't make you a hero to me, you know, or to the the guy living three houses down. You know what I'm saying? So you know, just think about these things when you label somebody something, and it may be something that we maybe go out even beyond hero, but um, whatever the case may be, think about these things. We need, we need, we need in our our society. We need to get back to to the root of the way things should be. To the root of you know when, when things have meaning, things have purpose. Sanity. Um, yeah, sanity. Yeah, absolutely. So again, yeah, I do. Uh, man, that, that was a good one. That was uh, another deep deep play today. I like it. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, but, I just uh, I, I don't. And Glenn, you've heard me. I don't care what side of the philosophical, political, religious, I, you know, that's that's your business. You know, I want you to think about this. Right, absolutely. You know, I tell people in courses, you know, we're looking at self-defense situations and violent situations. Even when we get into the black belt stuff as far as looking at technique, you know, it's art. It's about create martial art. Create. That's what artists do. Yeah. They look at a, a basic set of skills and they, they create things based on that. I may disagree with you, but if you can sit there and rationalize and show me why you came to that conclusion, yeah, that's what I'm after. That that right there hits the nail on the head. You know, being able to sit down and have a conversation about something, listen to both sides, and then not hate each other for it. <laughs> so yeah, that sounds awful familiar, don't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, that, that that ship sailed both. But. But, you know, but again, you got listen, you guys, think hard on this stuff. Think about this stuff. Um, join in the conversation. Tell us what you think. Let us know. Um, you know, right, wrong, or different. Are we always assholes or are we good guys? You know, we want to hear your, your, your side of it. That's what makes everybody better is when you can listen to the, just like Corp said, when you can listen to the other side and you can, you can explain to me your point of view and if you can articulate it and if you can sell me on it, then you've, you've bettered both of us. And that's what we want people to do is to think about things um, to better themselves and to better those around you. So with that said, if uh, unless you got anything else on that, brother, I think we'll get ready to wrap this one up for today. I'm good. It's, uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we'll actually be doing this uh, face-to-face again. Yeah, that'll be great, man. You can see me the faces I make at you then. Exactly. <laughs> They'll kick me under the table. <laughs> anyway, until next time, you guys, please, uh, before we go, please make sure that you, you click the subscribe button, the like button, and the uh, notification bell. And, uh, and uh, again, please comment. Send us email. Whatever the case may be, smoke signals, whatever. We want some communications. So, anyway, until next time, you guys, be safe. Y'all take care of each other. We'll see you next week.